I'm going to try to give you a brief introduction to the TI Inspire CX here. Uh, mine is the CAS version, which means it will have a few more features than the non-CAS version. Uh, everything I say here also will apply to the previous models of the Inspire that were not a color screen calculator. Uh, the operating systems are the same. The main difference is the presence of a color screen and a black and white screen. Uh, so when you turn on your calculator, you start with this menu, and I want to talk about the scratch pad today. We'll deal with documents later, but the scratch pad is where we're going to do most of our work, and I want to look at the calculate screen. And the calculate screen is simply where you're going to punch in stuff like 9 plus 3 which I hope you don't have to punch in, but hey, there you go, there's 9 plus 3. When you're in the calculate screen, or when you're anywhere on your calculator, if I wanted to do something that is above my buttons in blue, for example, if I wanted to do the square root of 20, then I would have to hit the control button because the square root symbol is in blue right here, so I'll control square root of 20, and then hit enter, and it will simplify your radicals for you. If you want the decimal, then you'll hit control. So I'll do square root 20. And if I want the decimal, the approximate symbol is above the enter button. So I'll hit control, enter. That gives me the decimal if you want it to, to give you the decimal. Let's see, some other stuff that we're going to look at uh, is a the menu button right here. And there are lots of things in this menu button, so I'm going to open that up. Uh, actions, we're not going to do a whole lot of. We'll be deleting variables at some point, but we'll worry about that later. Number, I'm not going to use much. Now, we will use algebra sum. Um, the solve feature is nice. The factor feature comes in handy. Um, we'll definitely be using the calculus menu sum. So we could go here and say, if I want to do algebra and I want to factor, then I will factor, and you simply type in the polynomial you want to factor. We'll say I wanted to factor x cubed, so I'll have to x rooftop right here, or caret if you want to be technical, x rooftop 3. Now you notice when I hit that exponent button, I'm now stuck in exponent land, so I need to move out of my exponent. I'm going to do that by hitting the tab button, and that brings my cursor back down on the same level. So I'll do x cubed minus, let's do 27. That is a difference of cubes, and it factors just like that. Now, if you do not have the CAS, you will not be able to factor on your calculator. This is one of the advantages of the CAS over the non-CAS. Also, if you want to see, um, and this works anywhere on your calculator, if you're graphing or if you're on the calculate screen, but if you look above the trig button here, you will see a circle with a question mark in it. If I hit control trig, what it does is it opens up a hint screen, and it's quite lengthy, but this could come in handy if you want to learn how to use your calculator. You could go through and read a lot of this information, and it, it actually tells you a lot of, of good things that, that can come in handy. So always take advantage of that uh, hint screen, and while you're becoming familiar with your calculator, it would not hurt for you to play around with that. Something else we're going to be using in addition to the menu button uh, is, well, I just realized I'm going to use the escape button. Uh, if you are ever in a menu and you decide you don't want to be in a menu, you hit the escape button over here. Escape, escape. Uh, and some other things we'll use in addition to menu, if you look next to the 9, there is this little button, and that simply opens up a bunch of templates. And you'll see that one of the templates, the predefined templates they have is limits. Um, now the CAS can do limits. If you don't have the CAS, the limit thing will be grayed out and there will be a T over it. I'm not sure what the T stands for, but um, if I wanted to do a limit, I simply will select limit and then you s fill in the blanks. So if I want to do the limit as X approaches 5, then I'll simply type X. I will tab over to the next field, so X tab 5. Uh, this gray box right here, it's gray because it's optional, and if you wanted to come from the left or the right, then you would put either a plus sign or a minus sign right here. I don't want to fill that one in, so I'm going to skip it, and I'll do the limit uh, as X approaches 5, and I'll just make this simple of X minus 3. Hit enter, and it will tell you the answer to the limit. So we'll use a lot of those features on your calculate screen, um, and if you decide you need to change some of your settings, uh, your settings are right here. There's, there are other ways to get to it, but the easiest way is to move your cursor up here next to the battery symbol where you see the little 
grinding gear thingy, whatchamacallit, widget. If you click on that, it will open up and here is where you can change your document settings, the handheld setup. Uh, document settings is where I want to go and document settings. Display digit float six. I usually will float more than that. What float six means is it will display six digits in the case of a decimal. Uh, I usually will float a little bit more than that and I kind of like to just leave it with float nothing. Uh, in calculus we do like to stay in radians and you can go through and change some of these other ones if you would like. I prefer to keep it with the default settings with the exception of float. So I'll change that to default. Click OK. Um, and what float does, if you notice square root of 20 up here, it gave me five decimals because I was on float five originally. If I do the square root of 20 now and get the decimal approximation, it will display a lot more decimals. And so what float does is it basically just maxes out the number of decimals that it can display. So there's some stuff about the main calculate screen. Now let's move on into the graphing screen. So to get to the graph screen, we have a couple of options. You could right here, next to Scratchpad, you see that little graph symbol. It looks like an X cubed graph, a cubic graph. You can click that and it moves into your graph screen. You could, right here, this button with save above it, that button, if you click it, toggles between calculate and graph. And that's the easiest way to get there. And when you get to the graph screen, the main difference between the Inspire and the older calculators, be it the 89 or the 84s, is that there is not a separate Y equals screen where you enter your functions. You enter your functions on the same screen as the axes on the TI Inspire. And you notice that I see my axes up here, and I see down here f1 of x. So the first thing I'm going to do is enter my first function. And I want to enter x squared plus 2x minus 2, plus 2x minus 2. Hit enter, and there's really no waiting for the graph. It pow, pops it up just like that. Uh, now, uh, one thing that is new to the Inspire that is not on the TI-89s is how you can adjust the window. On the TI-89, you had to go through Zoom, and then you could either uh, you could choose one of the presets, Zoom Standard, Zoom Trig, you could choose one of the preset Zooms, or you could manually adjust the window settings. On the TI-Inspire, however, you could simply click and drag the screen around. And to click if you look right here in the center of their button pad thing, multi-direction button, you see a fist in blue. If you hit control and then that blue and that center button, then it allows you to click and drag. Now, since I'm on a computer, I'm just using my mouse, but that's how you'd use it. So you click and you can drag it around if you want. Uh, you could also, if you want to zoom in, you can click and drag on the axes, and I can zoom and drag my axes down to make it zoom in or I could zoom out this way. So there's a couple of different ways to adjust your your um, your screen. You could also, and this is the way you would do it on the 89, click on menu and we want to adjust the window. So you could go through one of the presets, the standard zoom quadrant one, uh, zoom data, zoom trig, or you could go to window settings and manually choose the minimum and maximum x coordinates and the minimum and maximum y coordinates. Um, I'm going to cancel out of that because I'm pretty happy with where my graph is right now. Uh, something that annoys me about the TI Inspire is it displays things right in the middle of your graph screen. For example, notice that I, it graphed my parabola and then it has right next to it x squared plus 2x minus 2, which right now is not that bad, but if you had three equations graphed, then these things start to overlap. Well, you, what you can do with this is simply click and drag that out of the way. If you want to move it maybe to the bottom of the screen instead of right there in the middle. Something else that is kind of neat is that since it does display the equation right here, you could actually click on it, click again, and what I can do is delete. I'm going to go back because maybe I meant to do 2x minus 3 instead of 2x minus 2. I can go delete, minus 3, enter, and it adjusts the graph automatically. So I want to go back to 2x minus 2. I'll delete that and go back to 2x minus 2, enter. So you can adjust your, your equation right from the graph screen. You don't have to go back and forth between a y equal screen and the graph. Something you do want to look out for is when you are clicking and dragging. Say if I want to click and drag my equation right here, and I want to click and drag it back, 
one thing that you have to be careful with is you actually can click and drag and alter the equation. What I mean by that is if I go over here to my graph and I click and I start dragging, I actually am now changing the equation of my graph. And you would have to go back in and adjust the entire equation. Now here's a nice thing about having a standard control pad with a, or a keyboard on here. If you are familiar with keyboard shortcuts, control Z is the undo feature. So what I'm going to do, I want to go back to where I was. I, I forgot where I was. What x squared minus 2x minus 2 or plus 2x minus 2. I will hit control and Z and it undoes my last option. Now actually I need to do it again. Control Z. Wow, how many times am I going to have to do this? Control Z. There I am. So you can actually control Z your way out of there. All right, if you want to cho change the way your graph looks, like maybe you want it to be a different color or you want it to be thick, if you have several graphs on the same screen, you may want to have more, uh, uh, have some differences among them. And what you can do to adjust the appearance of the graph is you go to Menu, you go to Actions, and then you go to Attributes. And what I can do now is it pops this little thing up in the corner and it says attributes click on the object modify one or more attributes and then then press enter to finish so I'll click on this graph and now it pops up this window and what I can do here is I can go through I can make my line thicker I can come down here and I can make my line my graph dotted or solid Right here, you can change how it's labeled. Right now, the label is f1 of x. You can go through and just do y equals f1 of x. You can say y equals x squared plus 2x. You can go through several options with that. I kind of like the big cumbersome one. And then I thought there was a color option. I thought I could change the color. Interesting. Uh, and then the graph is continuous or the graph is discrete. I'm a fan of keeping it continuous. So there we go. I'm going to hit enter to save that. And there is my graph. Okay, two more things and then I'll be done. Uh, finding characteristics of the graph. A lot of times we will need to find things like x-intercepts uh, or maxes and mins and stuff like that. The way you find those characteristics is through the menu button. So we're going to go menu. I want to go to analyze graph and that's where your options are. If you want to find the zero, the minimum, the intersection, whatever. So I'm going to choose zero and the way you do zero here kind of the same as the 89, but it, the way you go through it, it's a little bit different. It does ask you for the lower bound and the upper bound, but the way you get the lower bound, that means you go to the left side of your zero. If I want to find the zero right here, I go to the left side, I simply click once, and then I drag this over. Now, I'm not holding the button down. I drag that over, and you notice as soon as I cross that zero, it pops the zero up, and it's already displaying it. So I'll click again, and there is my zero negative 2.7320508. That's quite a long, a lot of decimals. And so there you go. And if you want to move that zero over out of the way so it's not bugging you, you can simply clag, it, cl clag click and drag it out of the way. Uh, the last thing I want to show you is how to go back and, and say if I wanted to graph another equation and find the intersection of two equations, I will go, uh, I need to call my entry line back up. So the way we're going to pull up the entry line you can go to menu, view, and then show entry line. And if I click that, it pops back up. But if you were paying attention, under menu view, show entry line is also keyboard shortcutted with control G. So I could simply hit control G, and control G will toggle the entry line on or off. So I want to graph x plus 1, x plus 1, enter. And when I graph x plus 1, I want to find the intersection between those two graphs. So I'm going to go menu, analyze graph, intersection, and then intersection is going to be the same way as the 0. I'm going to go to the left side of the intersection, click, pull that over, right side, and there's my intersection displayed right here. So there you go. That got a little bit longer than I intended it to be, but I wanted to show you just the basics and the things that we're going to be using most on the TI Inspire. And as the year progresses, we will uh, learn a lot more uh, in some of the cuter, sexier, cooler things that this calculator can do.